presents BPA King of Bowling, featuring the area's top bowlers competing for cash prizes. And brought to you by Udipo, the pride of the Cincinnati brewing tradition. And Beauty Delight, the full-flavored light brew from Udipo. And now, here's your host, Jack Moran. Welcome once again to BPA King of Bowling. Today we are greeting you from Dell Fair Lanes, and next Sunday we'll be at Walt Center Lanes in Newport, Kentucky. Well, before we get along to introducing our bowlers this afternoon, I would like to say that I just spent one solid week on the flat of my back for the worst case of the flu I have ever had in my life. I've heard people comment, and you probably have too, following a bout of sickness that they would like to roll over and die. Well, I know exactly what they're talking about because I know exactly how they felt. One thing I would like to say, it's a good way to lose weight because you just can't keep any food on your stomach, but I would not advise you to try it as a weight-reducing plan. I have eaten so much chicken soup the past week that I expect to be cackling any moment now. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my good buddy down at Channel 9, John Popovich, along with our sidekick Slam and Sammy Coleman and our guest commentator last week, Mutz D. Felice, for sitting here last Sunday and doing such a fine job. Now let's get down to our bowlers at hand. The qualifying here, well, it was extraordinary last Sunday. This man's get to, getting to be a permanent fixture on the program. 814, John Gant, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. 749, which included a 300, Steve Miner. 739, lefty Jerry Depker. And our king, just back from Houston, Texas. He's going to make it a permanent fixture here. Stevie Fair, ladies and gentlemen. And our guest commentator today, in addition to our old standby, Slammin' Sammy Coleman, the gray-haired old fox, Mr. Bowler himself, Eddie Jackson. Eddie, good to have you back once again. This is Eddie's old stomping grounds I made right here. Our first match will have Jerry against Steve Miner. And the balls will start rolling right after this word about the beer that has brought you bowling for many, many years. We'll continue to do so. This should be something, fellas. Gant against Steve Fair, and here's that powerhouse, John Gant, 279. And he's still going. Jack. Go ahead, Eddie. This is going to be power against power, and uh, I don't know. It's going to be an awesome show. This is it. Sam, did you have this last week in the finale? Oh, certainly. So the replay of the last match last week went up 219 to 191, but I think it's going to be a little different today. It's going to be closer, I think. See if you just come back from the USD opening, finished 49th. He got $460. Average 211. And Steve Vanell's one pin right behind. Gets 450. Come on, Steve. <clears throat> well, that's a tough way to bring back Ed. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure Steve will be capable of it. Uh, you know, this uh, Stevie Fair uh, qualifier for the U.S. team trials this year, which is June up in Winnipeg. The old bucket. There's that indicator down there. Go between the deuce and the five, it says, to take the four and the eight. There he leaves the five. And that isn't good with with John Gant. No, I don't think you give John too big of a lead to that way. Even in practice between games, I think you have about ten in a row. His only open was the third frame. It should have been a 300 in match two. He buried one, left a seven. Went all the way, 279, and it should, Eddie, as you said, and Sam both, and myself, should have been a 300. It was there, there's no doubt about it. Well, Steve Fair knows 
But he's going to have to really put that strike ball to work. There it is. Jack, you know, you, you, you watch Stevie. He didn't let that uh, chop bother him. He just came right back, discarded that frame, and then went, went right to work on his game. We'll give you that question in a moment after the bionic man finishes his delivery here. <laughs> Great game. You know, counting practice, one, where is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He threw about six in practice. That's 15. That's about 17 in a row. That's true, yeah. The question again, name the BPA executive secretary. Send those cards to Mystery Quiz, 1821 Summit Road, room 216. Cincinnati four five two three seven. There's another one. I guess you would say Eddie hits a pocket with monotonous regularity, don't you say that? <laughs> I tell you what, he don't have to worry about making a spare. But the beautiful thing about it is that he's got all of the pins going to the right. Everything is just taken out to the right end of the building. Yeah, he's going to make Stevie go to work, I'll tell you that. Stevie's one frame behind him. <coughs> on, All right. Nothing wrong with that ball, either. Mr. Ferris says, there's a little power of my own. <laughs> power against power. There you see it. The bucket, he left the eight, uh, five pin in his opening frame. Steve quickly made the adjustment, came back, and has doubled. I, I would say youth is going to be served today, Jack. Well, youth. we got two of them holding. Well, both of them, I think, are 23 years old. Well, Stevie's 25, I believe. Oh, is he that old? He, you know, that old fella <laughs> like that. God. i got bowling balls older than that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'd call them some relics, wouldn't you? Here at Del Fair and you fans at home are seeing quite an exhibition of what it means to hit the pocket. And you can do just that if you get out to your favorite BPA lane this afternoon, tonight, or any time for some of that open bowling. Practice makes perfect. These two fellows right here are a good example of what we're talking about. This is an awesome display. This is like everybody sitting back saying, ooh, ah, on the 4th of July. They can't believe what they're seeing. Well, they're coming on like gangbusters, I guess you'd call that. Sam, we've been doing this program for 19 years, and Eddie knows very well. I can't remember when we've had something like this. No, that's true. Listen to the yaws, Eddie. <laughs> Ball just finished just a, just a touch behind the head pin, or it would have been out of there. We're going to have another 279. Second time he has shot this pin in two appearances. He still got his knock of shooting it. As John told us a couple of weeks ago when he was on, that used to be the pen that he would blow nine out of ten times. We'll be back right after this. Well, after that little break right there to have that Unipol, that Uni Delight, we're going to move right on to Steve Fair. Steve says, well, I got a chance to pick up a couple of pins here, Sam. He can make it very interesting. This, this is a must strike for Stevie here. I'd say you'd have it in the area. Oh, he's staring at that spot down there, too. I think that is what is known as answering the call. I think you're right, Ed. Yeah, that ball that uh, John had, Eddie, 
Sam. That was the only one that wasn't solidly in the pocket in his, in a, let's say, a game and a half. Well, Steve, uh, I bowled with Steve yesterday, and uh, of course, like you're saying with John, but Steve, on the first one, you know, was afraid to charge it a little bit, and he gave it a little room, and then he came right back and packed them all. And John, of course, what can you say? Everything has been in a pit. There is Steve. There is the split screen. There is the delivery. Ooh, ooh. Notice that six go flying right around. It was a good ball, but he set that one down on the foul line. Mm -hmm. Didn't get it out over it. Nah, it didn't finish too it finished strong, but it just didn't get the ten. It was a fine delivery. Uh, he it's just looked like to be was just a, sh a shade off at the foul line on his balance, but other than that, it was in the area. It was good enough to take that ten out of there. I would say. <laughs> about 11 pin spread. I was going to say, it's down to about one mark, and that goes back to that first train. Here he comes. Oh, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, that pitch there, Steve can take the lead. Uh, well, there is what you call Eddie opening the door, but good. Yeah, and that's just what we were talking about earlier on uh, Young Miner. Uh, he stiffened that knee up and uh, reared straight at the line and yanked it. The big four. Well, technically now, technically now, Stevie Pears up by five. That's right. The first bad delivery he's had. Bad count on top of a spare, and then he loses two more on top of that. Well, let's see how quickly he can regroup. Came right back. Yes. You never want to give this fellow an opening like John just did. No, I wouldn't think so, Jack. I think Steve will be off and running right here with this ball here. He hammers one here. He takes about a five-pin lead. Am I right? And right on, right on the button. Our score marker is Don Newkirk. He's yeah, he was a runner up here last week, wasn't he? Yeah, he got five on his last ball. He said. So I think he said he needed seven to make the program. Seven to make the show, and he got a five count. Another port cider. At the opening of the program, Eddie and Sam, I wasn't being facetious when I said that introducing Steve as our king, he could be here till spring. I, he would like that. He's liable to be here till spring. Well, he wants to go on the pro tour. Maybe he's going to make the money here to do it. He's going to be a father pretty soon. He's got to have yeah, some extra money. Long about April. Nancy Fair presents Steve with another bowler. Baby girl or a baby boy makes no difference. It'll be a bowler. We know that. Frame number eight. Steve, battling from behind, has taken the lead when that big four came up. A split. Four, six, seven, ten. Eddie, you know this fellow as well as I. I've known him since he was about six years old. He doesn't uh, let up on you when he gets you down. No, Stevie is one of the finest young people you'll ever meet, and he's already got enough credentials to call it a career. Oh, there's that pin again. How well remember that from the third frame of the first time he was on. I guess John is thinking to himself, this guy, Steve Fair, happens to be a jinx. Well, that could be, but uh, Stevie battled from behind. you got to give him credit. <laughs> Do 
He's got to go all the way, Sam. Yes, he will. He get 233, but I don't think that's going to be enough. <laughs> See if he can get 258 if he goes does the route, which I think he will. The ninth frame approaching John Gant on lane number nine. Back saying to Steve, well, if you're going to beat me, you're going to have to go out and do it with well, strikes. You know, you were talking about fair before, and uh, this game of bowling, there, there, there's no defense. You just play all offense, and I guess Steve said, I can't stop him from doing what he's doing. All I got to do is get my own and hope it's enough. And he's done just exactly that. And uh, That's one, one way to put it. I never thought of it that way. There is no such thing as defense in bowling. It's strictly an offensive game. Unless you trip him or something, maybe. It's a legal <laughs> procedure. Boy, I tell you, this fellow is nothing but concentration. What is known as making him dance a wee bit. Seven pin decided, well, I better dance to his tune right now and top it. If, if Stevie fills the frame, it's all over. Yep. And I got a pretty good hunch he's going to fill it. Uh, the best marks a strike, you know that. So it looks like next week we're going to have Stevie back again, along with Tucky Perez, John Gant. We're going to see that cannonball again next week. And either Dale Chamberlain, Rick Hensley, and Tim Hale will have to battle for a... For that uh, fourth spot. That's true. Each of them had a 696. Had a three-way roll-off. We bowled before the show next week. How about Rick would like to really clip him, wouldn't he? He's, oh, he's a barber. I know uh, they clip him, yeah. <laughs> How about Timmy Hale from Middletown? That's right. Yeah. Ooh -hoo. Steve says that should have been. Well, he just circled that ball, and it finished a little late, and uh, six was laying right there. You know, there's several kinds of tens, you know, and that one there was just a little lazy. And we'll have uh, Dale Chamber on from Kentucky, too, to roll off of that, too. It's been quite a while since we have seen uh, yeah. Dale. Dale was on up at Milford at quite a bowler. One of them roadway employees. Some of the old veterans are coming back again, aren't right. they? coming out of the woodwork. Gonna get old Steady Eddie here again. Instead of a commentator, get him on the lanes. Well, I'll let you know, Jack, I'm out there trying again. I was out there yesterday. Oh, that's good. Be something to see, fellas, like Eddie, Mott's. Mel Ball, remember those guys? Mel was out there yesterday, too. We got him still trying. They got him coming up out of the floorboards to bowl every ship. We got a waiting list. I'd say the girls are doing real good. Maureen Snodgrass, Bo Huda Pole, and her brother George Fox are doing real good. Giving the bowler service deluxe. What is it, 237 if he hammers 10 here? Right. That's all she wrote. Well, he has retained. His king. The crown belongs to him again. I think Stevie likes these $450 checks. I don't blame him at all. For about 12 minutes every, every Sunday, ain't bad. Yeah. Old John still throwing him. He can get 233 with two more, but not enough. All in the pin count on that one pitch. Well, that's and right. One ball kill him at big four. No bedpost. Double peanut or what have you. In other words, it's spelled disaster. <laughs> Two thirty-three with one more, and he loses by four sticks, and as you said, that bad pin can Jack, I, uh, I don't think you have to worry about anybody demonstrating how to shoot spares because there wasn't any of them missed or thrown. There it is, 233, but Steve Fair, still king with four pins. And that is 237. We'll be right back. I wish we had more time to talk about this one. Winner and still king, 
Steve Fair, ladies and gentlemen. And now to make the presentation, first of all, our genial host here, the proprietor, Charlie Goldfuss at Del Fair, and he's nominated Eddie Jackson, our guest commentator, to make the presentation. Eddie? Thank you very much, Jack and Charlie, and Jerry, a fine show for your first time out here, a check for $100. And Stevie, first time I saw you bowl, impressive young man. A check for $125. And John, what can we say? Awesome. 512 for two games, not bad. And Stevie, again, champ, congratulations. Another credit. Check for $450. Thank you, Eddie. Drawing just made by Steve for the $50 gift certificate from Fassels. Uh, the junior king of TV bowling last year was Stevie Hurst. Ruth Wildsworth of Hamilton, Ohio. The winner, she'll receive that $50 gift certificate. Well, you'll be able to see the same two meeting in next week's finals. Well, definitely we'll see Steve back because John Gant, whom we are now referring to as the bionic man, will be back again next week at Walt Center Lanes in Newport, Kentucky. You are just fantastic. And as Eddie said, the most awesome thing to come along the lanes in many, many years. And Steve, you got to admit yourself, he's something else, isn't he? As well as he bowled today, I was very lucky that he caught one break for me. <laughs> you made one bad pitch, and you know what it was. Yeah, it was a, I just pulled it bad. We wanted to put a camera behind to watch his ball coming down, but we can't lose the camera. That's why we don't do it. Yeah. 